Hello, students. Fumble Board coming at you live from her classroom. Uh, this is the year of COVID where a lot of things have been halted or changed or adapted. So many of my students have asked me if we could still please do the recitation of To Be or Not To Be. Uh, recitations are hard in the time of COVID. It's like COVID, it's choral readings. Um, we're not supposed to be kind of like chanting and singing together as a group, which is usually how we learn this. So I'll try to adapt it for that. Um, We'll see how this works. Uh, folks who are remote, you could do your uh, video via TikTok. You could do your recitation live via Google Meets. We'll figure that out when the time comes. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to kind of go through and teach this the way that I normally teach this for students. Um, this is to be or not to be. It's one of the most famous soliloquies in Western literature. Um, and it's something that I've always had students do for dual credit speech classes, for English 2, usually before we learn The Tempest really good to kind of get our brains acclimated to Shakespearean speech, the language, the poetry, um, the rhythms of the speech uh, before we, we engage in it. Again, things are shifting and adapting due to life with COVID, um, but uh, we're just going to give this a try anyway. We'll see how it goes. If it fails, it fails. We learn and we move on. So first, what I'm going to do is read this. This is not the whole soliloquy. A soliloquy has the word solo in it. Remember, a soliloquy is whenever a character is speaking solo just to themselves. Usually, these are formed as prayers so that we can hear the interior monologue of a character. Juliet on the balcony says, Romeo, Romeo, we're for us. Romeo, she's wondering why he has to be a Montague. She thinks she's saying that only to herself. We know Romeo is overhearing her. Um, in this case, Hamlet is uh, speaking to himself. And Hamlet, for those you guys who haven't read it yet, Hamlet is a young man whose uh, father was murdered by his uncle and then his uncle married his mom. Awkward. So he's got a lot of struggles in his life. And uh, this is a soliloquy he gives in the uh, third act of that play. I'm just going to read it. It's not going to make a lot of sense initially. I'm going to go through, explain it, and then hopefully it makes sense. To, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of trouble and by opposing in death. To die, to sleep, no more. And by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, the consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, sleep, chance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death what dreams can come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil and must give it pause. There's the respect that we can do so long now. All right, bunch of words in English. You know English, but you don't really know what this means. Whenever you're reciting something, we usually do three things whenever we're reciting something. Whenever you're reciting something, or the first time you're going to recite something, you're usually going to do three things. You need to understand your text, you need to chunk your text, and then you've got to repeat your text over and over and over again. So what does it mean to understand your text? Let's go through and figure out what is that Hamlet is trying to say. To be or not to be, that is the question. To live or die, that is the question. He is a man who is struggling with a lot of things in life and he's contemplating suicide. So to live or to die, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Slings, you don't know what slings are? You know what arrows are. Arrows are weapons so um, or are ammunition. So slings are like slingshots, slings and arrows. Is it better to suffer and struggle through life? The outrageous fortune of life, too. Like, this is a guy who's had some serious struggles in his life. Or the outrageous fortunes of things like a pandemic and all of the different kinds of struggles that go with that, right? Is it nobler? Is it better? Is it better in the, to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, to struggle through life, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing in them? Or, or do we fight? and end our uh, strife and our struggles. So which do we do in life? Do you just sit there and passively take all that life throws at you, or do you stand up and fight? And what I like is this image of a sea of trouble. I don't know if any of you have ever punched the ocean. I have because I'm a total dork. But punching the ocean doesn't really do much to the ocean. The waves just kind of keep coming, keep coming. What do I like is that he's got here, by fighting, we can end our troubles, right? So like this is, it's a whole, it's a whole soliloquy of either ors, to live or to die, to struggle or to fight, right? Like all of these kinds of choices that we can make, and I'm always telling you guys and gals, everything's about choices. 
And then he says to die to sleep. And what do we know about dashes? Dashes are interruptions. So he interrupts himself. And what does he say? He's like, no, more. It's not just sleep. It's not just sleep. We end the heartache and thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. To be heir to something means you're going to inherit it. So our body is going to experience a lot of heartaches. This is a janky broken heart. And natural shocks. Think about your body just constantly being kind of shocked by all of the things that happen in life. This is a consummation. This is an end. Devoutly to be wished. Devoutly means holy. So it's a holy end to wish that the struggles and suffering and pain of life would end, right? To die, to sleep. He goes back to that again and says death would be like a sleep. And then he says to sleep for chance to dream. And then what does he do? Ah. He interrupts himself again. Dashes are always interruptions in thought. Ah, there's the rub. That's the problem. That's the problem. What happens when we die? What dreams come when we die? For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. We have to hesitate when engaging in these kinds of thoughts, what dreams may come? When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, when we have taken, I always like shuffled off this mortal coil. is like our body is the, the house, our mortal coil, our mortal bodies are the house for our soul, right? And so shuffled off this mortal coil, it's like take off, um, it's like taking off clothes, except it's like our body is clothes. Like we're shuffling off our mortal coil. We're taking off our body. Um, what dreams come whenever we get rid of our bodies must give us pause. Aha! We have to wait. We need to think about what dreams are going to come. Are those dreams of heaven or are those dreams of hell? If you commit suicide, those are going to be dreams of hell. There are consequences for engaging in killing yourself and committing suicide. Once we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. Ah, we've got to wait because there are consequences to these actions. Almost like Hamlet is taking a meta moment. Earlier this semester, I had you guys and gals read articles about taking a meta moment whenever things are overly emotional to avoid making bad choices, and that's what Hamlet's doing here. You guys and gals say Shakespeare's so old now to touch, but he's doing exactly the same kinds of things that we're teaching you guys and gals. Ah, that's got to give us pause. We can't just jump into this uh, action. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. We've got the respect the consequences of our actions. We've got to respect the long-term consequences of death. And that's what makes life calamity. Calamity is sad. Life is full of sadness because you can't just have an easy escape without consequences, right? So Hamlet starts off with to be or not to be. Should I live or should I die? That's the question. Do I, do I sit uh, and, and suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune? Or do I take arms against the sea of troubles and by fighting in them? To die is like sleeping. Uh, and not just sleeping, we end the heartache and all of the pain of life. It's an end to be wished for. When people die, all of their suffering ends. And then he says again, to death is like a sleep, but uh, we got to pause for a second. Ah, there's the rub. That's the problem. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil? What kinds of dreams exist in the afterlife? If you make the wrong choice, you're going to go to hell, and that's not going to be a good choice to make. Uh, there's the respect. That's what makes us pause. That's what makes us respect life. We should respect life. Now, this soliloquy goes on. This is only half of the soliloquy, um, but I don't want to give you more than you can handle for uh, memorizing. So now that we kind of have a sense of what this is about, let's chunk it up into smaller pieces and work on repetition.